Hi there. So my next challenge with painting with this robotic arm is I wanted to try to paint a 20 by 24 panel of an abstract painting. And the largest painting I've done so far is a 12 inch by 16 inch painting. So one of the challenges when working with a robot is making sure that the robot can reach all of the areas that you need it to go. Now normally that is pretty well defined, but with one of these robots with seven pivot points, what ends up happening is you have a lot more flexibility of where it can go. It can go around in a circle, but it can have more than one solution of where, of how it can reach a specific point. And you'll see that throughout this video because what I do before I start painting or before I know I can paint that size, I make sure that the robot can reach all the areas. Now, a couple days ago, when I was just finishing a painting, I quickly put this panel up where the robot could reach it and then went to all four corners. And I noticed it specifically joint number four. So this is joint number one, joint number two, three, and four. Specifically joint number four in the middle, it can reach this point by bending the elbow this way or by bending the elbow this way. And what happens if it's bent down is it's actually gonna hit the board and then when it tries to lift, it's gonna do this and then it gets all tangled in itself. And I end up getting errors of motor overload because each one of these joints has a motor and if it can't go anymore, it's gonna overload. So basically I wanna find an area where the robot won't get caught in one of these positions where there's no solution. So I ended up wanting to raise the table because it looked like if you raise the table, it won't get caught in that spot. But as soon, as, walking in the room this morning with that intention, I noticed that when the robot is at in the home position and so at zero and all the joints are reset, that it sits right at the table. So if I, so it sits right at the table. So even if I tried to raise it, I can't do that. And that's actually one of my challenges I have to raise the robot gripper six inches before I can add a paintbrush. So that's why I don't just have something permanently fixed in there. What else can I say about this? So I'm going to talk through a sped up version of some of the things that I tried. So I just finished doing a painting and everything was set up. So I wanted to check the constraints of the robot to see if it could do a 20 by 24 inch and you can see right away that joint number four binded with itself so I'm just moving around the panel trying to see can it reach all the spots right now it's sitting directly on the table and there each time it goes to the far end it binds with itself so I was just trying some ideas maybe if I angle it up but now the brush is at a funny angle. So that would be a lot of math to get it to work. So I put it back down again. Actually, I think now it's sitting on one of those paint containers. And so it is raised up and it seems to be working. So that I left it at that so that way I could dwell on it to see what I wanted to do. And I was thinking about raising the table. So this morning I came in and I'm measuring because I know it should be about 39 inches from the floor. And you can see I wanted to raise the table, but look how low that gripper sits when it's in the zero position. And I want to be able to zero it out anytime it binds. So I'm putting the brush in and now I'm checking the constraints. So this is literally what I did the other night. Now I'm manually moving the robot around. The robot itself comes with a software called XArm Studio. And so it allows me to move the robot in the XYZ coordinates as well as pitch, roll, and yaw. As well as each joint individually. So I'm just moving things around trying to think. Eventually I'll have to update the code. So flat didn't seem to be working, so I started thinking, how could I stand it up? I do have easels in this, my storage locker, but because I have limited space right now, I've been painting with my drafting table rather than a 
easel. So now I was seeing if I could go to the side. I in particular chose this way because then I can paint with my right hand while the robot is left-handed. So I just moved the camera angle for you. Now I'm going back and forth. Up and down is a little bit challenging and I can see the coating would be difficult if the, the panel was on an angle. But if it can reach everything, then that is interesting to me. So the way the robot's sitting right now, it's actually hit itself. So I'm trying to move the panel around. I happened to have weights because I was doing some gluing or some bonding of some panels and so I was using the weights. So now I'm using it to stand that up. So yeah, it's hit itself again and now it's not even sitting tall anymore. And now I've zeroed it out. And now I'm thinking again about maybe putting it at this angle. I wouldn't be able to paint with the robot, but maybe there's a way I could stand beside it. I'm not sure yet. But even now I'm struggling with the pitch roll and yaw because I want to be able to keep the brush upright. So you're seeing me brainstorm and just try to figure this out. So I'm going back to what I did at the very beginning. And what I'm going to do now is when I put the paintbrush in, you can see I tried putting a longer brush in, but the brush is sitting particularly low right now. It's just in the gripper. So that means that it would be as if the board is even higher, which I was thinking about doing. So it's joint four started messing up right there. I was starting to think about what if I angle the brush, but I really didn't like the code or how that would look. So I just started easing slowly into that far reach. I lost it again, just trying to get the joints to figure themselves out. That's when I go zero it and try to get the brush straight again. And for some reason, however I randomly placed that board there, it actually was able to go to all four corners. So hopefully I can maintain this position. Right now I just have it sitting on some of my mediums and paints, acrylic paints that I have, which is serendipitous because one of my recent videos that I recorded actually has me discussing what's in some of those jars. So if you want to see the link to that video, you can click somewhere up there. But right now it's sitting on those and that seems to work. One of the th tricks that I do, and you'll see that in my other videos of painting, is that when it goes to dip and when it goes to clean the brush, between those spots it stops at the bottom of the painting and you'll watch it jerk a couple times. And what I have the code doing there is it's actually resetting all of the joints. Because what I found over time, if it's painting here, dipping there, washing here, going up to those three locations, it starts losing its the motor position. So it, it might start finding one of those erroneous positions. And so if I reset it between everything, then that seems to keep it under control. So one of my thoughts is I might have to do that between brush strokes with this robot if it happens to start going the wrong way when it's actually painting or if it starts going far and when it does that repeated motion of painting, it gets to the right spot. The biggest concern I have with the current setup of how I've been able to reach all the four points is it's actually about six inches above the table. So all of the paint pots as well as the cleaning section, should I leave it low? And then how to manage all of the variables to make sure that I always have things at the right height. And when I go back to my regular painting when it's sitting low and my this painting when it's sitting high, 
everything can still be reached and there's no typos because one of the things that will happen is and we've seen it before in a previous video I'll link to that video but if you get the Z direction wrong it's a little more catastrophic so that this was what happened when I was trying out some new code there was a typo in the Z direction and it went into the table and I physically broke the brush one good thing in this new setup is with this one it was the robot pushed the robot pushed the the brush into the page whereas now there's some offset so it's probably just gonna push the the block green block that you can see here out so while we're sitting here i will play this in the background so here is and i'll move this i was a little scared it was going past the the board because I've moved the board to show you guys so let's see if I can still get it so here it took a lot of trial and error but here is the robot going to all four corners just on the four corners of a 20 by 24 so I'm just gonna each time it goes to a corner try to center it one benefit of it sitting flat is I can also keep painting with it I was worried that if I had to tilt it up towards the robot if I got my easel out, how could I paint along with it? So that was one of the reasons I decided to try to put it up like this so I could paint with my right hand and it could be left handed because at first I thought maybe I'd put it on that wall, but I wouldn't be able to reach. And so my current process wouldn't work. So you can see just as we're getting to these edges, that joint number four, which is this one here, it's getting bit almost at 180 degrees. And that's where it can flip the other way and it has two solutions of where the position can be. But I think you can see it better here, so watch this joint. Oh, I have to start it again. So watch this joint. It's going to flatten out when it reaches this block. And see how it also accelerates there? So that joint starts moving faster and that's where I get some of those motor overload errors. So I want to find spots where I, it can happily move. Now I'm making the assumption if it can reach all four corners, everything in the middle will be okay, but that's just one of the things we'll have to find out. So I just edited this video and realized it's a little bit on the long side compared to my other videos. So I think this painting is going to end up being a two-parter. So this is part one of painting a 20 inch by 24 inch and thank you so much for watching and learning about some of the challenges it is to use a robotic arm maybe it inspired you please leave any ideas or thoughts or if you do use one of these robots let me know if you have tips or tricks how to make sure that the robot doesn't run into itself or have motor overloads I'd really appreciate that but this is just the way I troubleshoot and work through the robot and get it to paint. So hopefully you found that interesting and I look forward to part two where I actually work with this robotic arm and create the 20 inch by 24 inch painting. Thanks for watching.